Good to have back with us Donnie Caton, head pastor of the Victorious Life Worship Center. Donnie, I told the folks that we got a pre-heart surgery uh, conversation with you. We needed to get a post-heart surgery conversation to check up on you, see how you were doing. So how are you doing? Well, I like the pre better, but the post is not bad. <laughs> it is what it is, and hopefully this is a good sign of some healing. I'm doing pretty good, not bad. Now, I understand that you, you had some shortness of breath, though, right, prior to the surgery. Are some of those symptoms gone now? Shortness of breath, shortness of breath some uh, dizziness, but mostly shortness of breath. That was the cue that something wasn't right. Is it gone now, or do you still have those symptoms? Yeah, some, but not, not bad. I, as I get back in shape a little bit and walk some, it'll get better over time, but not bad. I didn't get the full thing where they cut you from <laughs> top to bottom. I only got about a three-inch three scar up in my chest and then a couple of drain tubes coming out that I have to deal with. But the drain tubes have been gone about a week now, and the chest is healing up fairly nicely. And... Every day's a every day's a better day. Last night's the best sleep I've had since I've been home. So looking good. Well, here's the first thing I am not going to ask. I don't want to see the scars. I just thought I'd go ahead and tell you. We 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 don't want to see those scars. I don't have any zippered legs. A lot of those guys get the zippered legs. They didn't do anything to my orders. They just did my aortic valve. But uh, really much better. A little thinner. About 27 pounds down. But needed to lose some weight. So it's a good thing. Let's go back because a couple of weeks ago when we talked to you, it was only a day or so later. And at that time you didn't know for sure you were going to, when you were going to have the procedure. And about a day or so later, you do have the operation. And I know there's always some anxieties related to a surgery. Um, were those anxieties, um, are, were they qualified by what happened in the procedure? Well, I've been waiting since probably January to have this surgery. And so the anxiety was pretty much over with. I was just ready to get it over with and get done with it. But um, not that bad. Um, you know, I trusted greatly in my Savior, Jesus. And then I trusted in Dr. Sandwith, who's an excellent surgeon. I have no complaints at all about my surgery. It really went well. Everything was... Um, What's well, so the word they use um, by the book? Everything went perfect. Uh, but, you know, I've had a couple of complications, but nothing major. Can you tell us about the complications? Or are they just routine stuff? Well, I got one of my uh, places where my drain tube came out is uh, cracking open a little bit. We're concerned about that. And then I did have a little bit of soreness in my, my right breast. Uh, I think some of it maybe, you know, they give you one of those hugging pillows but they really don't want you to spend all your life hugging that pillow. So I slept with that pillow and kept that pillow all day long. And I hugged that baby every time I was going to cough, I hugged it. But even <laughs> when I wasn't coughing, I hugged it. That may have uh, caused some of the problems with my soreness in my breast, but who knows? <laughs> now, what about more procedures? Because from what I understand, there's going to be a little more that you've got to go through before you're completely repaired. Well, I don't really know that I understand everything. And, and my wife's in the other dining room. She'll probably come and correct me. But from my understanding, talking to the doctor, only about 35% of my heart was actually functioning. Um, through the aortic stenosis, I had uh, what they call a thickening of the muscle of the heart. And so he said if, if my heart function didn't improve, that I would have to have a pacemaker and the doctor came in and talked to me about that, a, a different surgeon. And he told me that he probably would do a pacemaker and a defibrillator at the same time if they have to do that. They were gonna wait about five weeks out and I haven't gotten a follow-up appointment yet. So I don't really know if they're gonna do that or not. But if they do, uh, he didn't wanna put a pacemaker in and have to go back and put in a defibrillator. So they're gonna do both at the same time. So it is either this procedure is taking care of everything or, the last remaining step would be the pacemaker and defibrillator. Correct. Correct. When are you getting back into the pulpit? I know that you want to get back, but when do doctors say you need to get back? Doctor hasn't really told me anything about that. Um, last Sunday, I did go to drive in worship service and sat in the car and then they asked me to come and close with prayer. So I went up and I 
<laughs> I've been shut up for a couple of weeks, so I did have to do a little more than just pray. But I want to go back uh, the 17th, back in the pulpit, but 24th, if not the 17th, but it depends on what happens. I have a follow-up appointment on the 13th of May with my surgeon. Whatever he tells me from there is what we do. But listen, I got I got great staff that just picked right up and he never missed a beat at church. It's just been, you knew I was coming with church. You, you set me up. But uh, our young associate uh, youth pastor and minister of music, uh, Pastor Ben Healy, is preaching Sunday. And uh, you hear some background noise. He's here at my house doing some work on some gutters. But um, he's going to be preaching Sunday. And a lot of his friends and, and family members will be there. It'll be extra people coming just because he's there. And our people are coming just faithfully. And anybody else around the Crestview area still doesn't have church. We have in drive in worship. And it just, every Sunday has been so special. And we look forward to that at 1030 this Sunday. What about the fatigue factor? I mean, uh, I'm assuming that you get tired or quicker. So how is that working out? You know, I, I do feel sometime a little bit fatigued, but um, sometimes a little shortness of breath, but not, not any worse than what I've felt before, I don't think. At times, I feel a little bit better than I did before. Uh, I'm not walking quite as much as I should be. And, of course, I don't start a, start a cardiac rehab program until about uh, five weeks out, six weeks out. So I'm really just, you know, supposed to pace myself, kind of do as I want to do, and um, catch a nap every now and then during the day, eating pretty good. But this Karen's keeping me pretty regimented with my diet. So um, all in all, we're, we're having a good, good run with this thing. We're spending a lot of time together at home. We haven't. Uh, neither one of us are pinned to the wall in the mornings when we get up. So it's been, it's been nice. She's been a great caregiver. I'll tell you, she, she's a great school teacher, but she could have been a nurse. She doesn't like the, she doesn't like the stuff that nurses go through, but she is a good nursing care. She's very, very good at it. Well, I'm glad to see that you're getting the best of care and that you got the best of care at the hospital there in Fort Walton where the procedure is concerned. Uh, and, and hopefully when this is all done and over with, whether it includes the pacemaker or not, that you're up to full speed and got about, I don't know, 30, 40 years to go. Well, you know, the wonderful thing is, and I, I want to give a plug to the Fort Walton Beach Medical Center because I had the option to begin with to go to UAB, and of course UAB didn't want me there because of the virus. But Dr. Eric Sandwith, is, he's done 6,000 heart surgeries, 6,000 plus now because he's done mine, but um, he's just an excellent surgeon. Uh, I was told before I went in that he would go in and after you're just put to sleep, he lays his hands on all of his patients and prays for them. But you know, the ironic thing, when Karen and I got there that morning of the surgery, the anesthesiologist came in went over all that he was going to do and then he called sister karen and sweetie and called her over and took her hand took my hand and he just prayed um of course you know dr alden a is my cardiologist who's a great friend of mine and great great uh, cardiologist christian man and then dr sand with christian this guy praying and and then i had a dr ross in the hospital was my hospitalist fine christian man Everybody that took care of me at Fort Walton, I have no zero complaints about the nursing care. Uh, I did not have to call back and say, come down here. I need somebody. You know, they were on the spot. Uh, the only problem I had was with the food, and it wasn't the hospital's fault. I was a, a day from coming home before I found out what the problem was. It was Dr. Sandwith and his diet, because he would not let me have off the menu. He, he orders for you. <laughs> And, uh, but that was the only thing. I just got tired of, you know, the same thing every day, just about. Um, but but all in all, I'll tell you, the, the care's been great. The church family's just been tremendous. And I don't know if you saw the little drive-by thing they did for me. Uh, put me out in the driveway, and they drove by in a little parade with a police mm -hmm. escort. It was really nice. And then they've just been so good to us. They're feeding us, uh, and they're doing heart-healthy diets. Uh, to the most part, it's been really, really good. They come two or three days a week. Somebody brings us dinner at night. And it's just, it's, <laughs> I'm kind of enjoying this. If I wasn't, you know, <laughs> wasn't for being sick, I would really enjoy it. If it wasn't for that heart procedure, otherwise. That's true. Heart yeah. procedure is kind of the downer part of it. But now I'll tell you, I didn't get 
you know, I didn't get what a lot of people get with a heart procedure. I can certainly understand anybody that's had open heart surgery, what, you know, you go through. Uh, I've had times that the emotions get to you. Uh, times the, the physical part of it, the, you know, just the being tired. But um, I'll tell you, it's not something I would choose to do again. But if I had to do it again, I'd do it the same way I did it. Because uh, care was really great. And the church family has been great. The community has been great to us. We've had uh, the community has been very responsive to us. I, I'll tell you, I want to brag on you because um, WTJT, the last time we were together, had about, I think it's about 2,750 uh, views of our little uh, podcast or whatever you're calling it. But uh, I'm, I'm just amazed at how good God's been and how faithful he's been to us. We had a tre <laughs> tremendous month in April. You know, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but uh, the bank sent me a thing where we could apply for some stimulus money for the mm -hmm. check of the church. Well, we would have had to give back money because our, our budget really was met. Every, every, every dime of it was met. Uh, so we're excited about what God has. We're going to come out, hopefully, uh, this is going to hopefully be our last Sunday outside because we have to be outside. Uh, we hope to move back in Mother's Day. Uh, Associate Pastor Robert Pace's wife, Sister Nett, is going to preach uh, that Sunday morning on the, the 10th of May and then the 17th. I hope to be back, if not, maybe the 24th. The 31st is a fifth Sunday, and we're going to start going outside every fifth Sunday. We just... We've had a blast. We've got a little FM transmitter. So they can sit in their cars now and listen mm -hmm. to us on a little low band the FM radio. It's wonderful. Well, it is good to have you back. And uh, I'm, I'm afraid that if I let this interview go much longer, you're going to start preaching and you'll get fatigued. So I don't want you to get fatigued. Um, I, want that. But I know our audience was greatly uh, concerned and interested in your status. So I wanted to do a follow-up and we look forward to you getting back into the pulpit in full strength there in Victoria. I appreciate that. I had so many tell me that the updates that you gave on WTJT were wonderful. And for those folks that listen up in Greenville, Alabama, I haven't met a lot of you yet, but we're glad to, to have that station on board with us and uh, just look forward to a great, great 30 more years with WTJT. Sounds good. Donnie, we'll be talking soon. Thank you, Brother Robert. Thank you.